so then depending on what sign you are, it comes into it as well. But just, just on this level, I'm not expecting you to, I'm just pointing a few little ways you see it. It's, right now you just have to keep, is this so? Does this really represent my objective world? And objective is not just r rational thinking, it's functioning and common sense about functioning, about who's doing what, who did what, who didn't do things, who did things, what's happening, what's got done, what, what has to be, if you're going to play in a team, there's a certain amount of work that has to be done, everyone has to work together to accomplish, to play the game. So the game of life is played out, but this functional world is above. That's our conscious, our world of outer consciousness above the horizon. So the horizon is divided by the ascendant and descendant. There's, this is the ascendant is the eastern horizon, the descendant is the west. So half of the sky is above us. We're seeing it as a circle here, but really it's a hemisphere. It's a whole hemisphere around the, um, around the chart. So the, um, so the half of the sky is, the, is this above. So this ascendant descendant is called the line of consciousness. It's conscious of what's above, but it's the consciousness between what's above and what's below. So um, now what's below, it's, our subjective side in our life, our subjective being. So we have the objective functioning above the horizon, the six houses above the horizon. We have subjective being in the six houses below the horizon. It's our subjective being. We can't, it, we take it personally. It's how we process our personal life, it's how we sleep, it's how we dream, it's how we play, it's how, how we express ourselves. It's before anyone else is even involved. It's how, it's how we come to terms with things in ourselves. So this subjectiveness, you can't exactly measure it. But even if someone is in a coma or had an accident, they're paralyzed or whatever, their conscious world is really limited, but not necessarily their subjective being. They're still alive. You know, they may not be functioning. Some would be functioning so much there's no time for themselves and they burn out. They, have, they lose their depth. Some would be not functioning enough. They have a lot of depth. But they don't fit in anywhere. On a simple basis, we have our home and we have our career. How much energy do you put out to career or status and how much do you put to making your home the way you want it to be? And how much time do you spend in there? So this subjective being and objective functioning, very powerful distinction. It's almost... What did I say? Okay. Where, if you're thinking about you as a, as a person, where, where do you end and where does the rest of the world begin? Why don't you think about it for a minute? Where's the end of you and the beginning of the rest of the world? Okay. So really, it's almost at what point does it become subjective? Some people are totally subjective about everybody they know and everything out in the world, but they're not the most functional because of that. Some people are very objective and, and uh, about their personal world, but not. But it's a, a conservative attitude, but it can restrict the subjective insights. So there are two different worlds. Where is the edge of you? Where is the edge of you? Where does the rest of the world begin? It's a very simple thing. This is the line of consciousness. And the edge of the world is the edge of your skin. Anything outside of your skin is in the objective functional world. Everything inside the edge of your skin is your subjective personal world. Other people can't see it. Someone can see if you're smiling or not. That's an outside thing you can see. But how you're feeling, and like some people have the ability to sense somebody else's being. Well, we all do, but often we're so busy interacting, we don't have time to fuss with that. We usually have to put that under control to go out and work and come back to that in our own personal little circle. So this objective and subjective. So in the signs, we had freedom and responsibility. In the houses, we have objective and subjective polarities. And the objective is functional. The subjective is just being without functional, necessarily functional considerations. 
Okay. So the line of consciousness is the horizon. It's really like a whole circle. Like a, we're looking at the side of a tabletop almost with a whole sphere above it and a sphere below it. But we're seeing it as a line on the chart. And there's two sides of this line of consciousness of what's outside of us, our objective world and our subjective world. Where are we? Yeah, okay. So, yeah. So the objective world is this objective functional reality. Partners, relationships, money shared, traveling, working, friends, inter enemies, working with people, interacting with people, accomplishing things or not accomplishing things. What are you doing with your time in the world? How old are you? What are you doing? You're 30, you're still at home with your mom? What are you doing? Like, how functional How are we able to get? Some people are much more capable of being functional. And other people are much less capable of being functional, but not less a person. So uh, tremendous social judgments have come around this. So like if someone's born at noon, at the highest point, with their son at the highest point above the horizon in the objective functional reality, and you have another kid, say, born right at midnight, at the lowest point below the horizon, well, you'll see the difference between these two kids in a second. The one above the horizon, by the time they get to high school, they're going to want to they, they get they want to get out of school. They want to get their own business. They want to get their own control. So no one's telling them what to do. So they could be setting functions in order. They want status and position. So they're they'll get out of the house easily. They're motivated to. But someone born at midnight, they don't feel they fit in out there. Why bother going out there? I just stay at home and wait till mom dies and I'll get the house. So the subjective being create has we have attitudes our subjective being it totally affects our outer objective functioning in one way or another it can be positive or negative it depends how well we project if we're projecting our subject being and things we really believe in and we project it and we accomplish something with that we're going to feel we did something in life if we haven't well this is the puzzle between rising and setting the instigative reacting here we're coming from our subjective being going out into the objective functional world. We go in the morning, we project it in the afternoons, the PM hours, we're reacting to the functional world, trying to get back to our personal home, our personal subjective being. But when you apply it to psychology or inner and outer concepts, this is a very powerful insight. You can spend a lot of time just thinking, about, I have spent my lifetime seeing these distinctions and you just it's not hard to see you just have to look at the charts and look and it just shoots out at you so if someone has a subjective problem a subject and they're not functioning properly they need to rebuild their subjective being and, and secure their foundation but somebody else may not be functioning well and the problem is totally an objective one and someone can teach them Do, you're doing this the wrong way fix this fix that some things can be fixed just in social situations by changing how you function but personal deep things like heartbreaks or feeling okay or not okay, like, oh boy, you let go of a kid or your kid grows up and you don't see him they, and, and they leave you alone. Boy, you can feel really alone. It's not about functionality, it's about what am I good for? Like it hits this subjective being which affects our dreams, our whole subjective inner psyche. So, whew, we haven't even got to what this house means or that house means, but we've got to the main core. If you just took the signs, daylight is greater, nighttime is greater, Daylight increasing, nighttime increasing. I took those four sections of the zodiac and take these rising and setting and above or below categories of the houses and interpret a planet. You'll get tremendous depth of insight about a person, far more than you get just by memorizing what each house means, by the words of what a house is supposed to relate to. And it's not something you have to remember that much. Once you know it's like that, it's easy to see it, and it stays with you. It's an, it's not a hard. This is not hard, all the we're going to get to all the other stuff, but the other stuff are add-ons to this basic factor. So, whew. So with the okay, here we go. Here's the full one. We have the line of consciousness above above the horizon. It's bright. It's out in the outer functional world. The subjective being below, and the ascendant. Is the one point where we're conscious, and the descent is the other point of consciousness. This line, the horizon, is the line of consciousness of chart. At the ascendant, we're conscious of our self-identity. Here's my image between where I'm coming from, my home, 
how do I look to go out in the world? Do I look okay? Am I dressed okay? Am I going out? What, am I smiling? Am I happy? What attitude, what face do I put on to meet the world? So this is our kind of morning face, our conscious of self, conscious of what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to project, what I'm trying to make happen. Oh, I'm into astrology. What sign are you? I want to tell you about astrology. That's projecting. You're into astrology? How can that work? What's happening? Well, can it, how, how does it work? And you're responsive. You're taking in energy. You're questioning. With someone. You're conscious of being related to others. So the conscious of self is the point where you're coming from yourself up. The inside of you has come up to the edge of your skin and it starts to affect the outer world. I mean, really, these are all shaken together. We see them all as one, one whole sense of our matrix of being. But we're separating them out to look at certain layers or levels at a time. So we are dividing pieces of our consciousness that we don't just see. We're more than just the consciousness of ourselves. It's dependent on all these other factors. But how we project and our image that we project with and our attitude, the sign that's on our rising sign, is the attitude we have to our consciousness of ourselves. And our consciousness of self is always opposite the consciousness of being related to others. So the consciousness of self is like, hi, I'm here. The consciousness of being related, like, being related to others is more like, ouch. Or, yeah, you like me? Okay, thanks. I'm, did you, I'm, glad you were like, I'm glad you wanted me to be here. You're taking the feedback of whether you were liked or not. Conscious of being related to others. So you take this line of consciousness and you project it, you see in a relationship, we're projecting out in a relationship who I am, we're getting feedback and we're not. I did everything, you're never doing anything. It goes back and forth. Usually about the judgments of things, but sometimes you can have the functional world really together and each person doing their thing, but you're never taking time to your own, we're not feeling, we're not connecting inside anymore. So this is very sensitive, these points stand out. How you see yourself and how other people see you, how you react to other people. But how other people, it's how you react to other people. But in that way, what we, how we see, how we project our ascendant is the opposite of how we respond in our descendant. So really we see ourselves in one way and how we're seeing ourselves is the exact opposite way. We're seeing how we're affecting other people. But other people see us exactly the opposite way. They see the results of how they have to react to what you're doing. They see the descendant. So hence, the ascendant is our image identity. The descendant is on the relation, what type of relationships we have determine of how well we respond to others. Good relationships, bad relationships, and no relationships, whatever. Too many relationships. All of these things will have their effect at the consciousness of being related to others. One, two, how many people can you, how much energy have you got? How much sensitivity can you take from people? So in the projecting outwardly and the responding inwardly, as we project out, we're, the emphasis is going to the consciousness of ourselves. There's the subjective side and objective side of, of rising. Then there's the objective reaction and the subjective reaction. So you can be a career in a status. Uh, let's just go to, no, okay, we'll sleep it here. So if you're in a point of status, you're in a career and you do something wrong. Once you're in a position, you can choose who you align to. You ha who do you hang around with at work? Do you hang around the boss? Do you hang around with, you go out for a smoke, or you, you hang around with people that are working, or just are you just going out to a bar? Who you hang around with? How do you, what kind of people do you attract? How do you get people with similar understandings or similar lifestyles? Do you have people with similar financial levels in you? And depending on your understanding and the financial levels you have and how you're interacting with each other people, that understanding and that trust will determine what kind of relationship you attract. We're going to come more into this, but this is and. So what kind of relationship have I got? Has anyone, have I found anyone? Is anyone there for me? This is all the descendant talking. It's the part where the objective world comes into my, you're there for me, for my personal being. Oh, wow. We start to see that personal side. Or another way of seeing it is, hi, hon, I'm glad you're home. Let's have fun. We're here. We're in our personal world now. So many people have very practical outer worlds and have very creative, personal, subjective worlds. 